this entitled mum is about to get these teens in trouble, all because they watch a YouTuber that she doesn't like. Is the content that bad, or is this entitled mum making up crazy excuses to control them? Happy birthday, today's your birthday, on with the revamped show. This happened about two years ago, but I still remember the details like it was yesterday. The background. This story is about my three cousins, all under 12 years old. Two of them live in Minnesota, and we don't get to see them very often. But in August for the past years, they take a month-long trip to my grandfather's house in New York. My other cousin is the youngest. She lives in New York too, about an hour away from me. She is pretty spoiled. She is 10, and she has a Kindle, an iPad, and an iPod. And she's the biggest snitch. EC and M1, M2 are not from the same immediate family. In the story is me, entitled cousin, Minnesota 1, cousin, Minnesota 2, entitled aunt, and I am you in the middle uncle. Some more background. My grandpa finished his basement when my M1 was born, as that was his sixth grandchild. Now he has nine. So that we'd all have space when family gatherings went. A bathroom, pool table, and huge box TV. The whole nine yards. I've spent a fifth of my life down there. He got a Wii down there after it had come out, and it had been down there since it hasn't come out. Shoot to the present day. M1 and M2 were in New York on their August trip, and it was coming to a close. Entitled Cousin and M1 had sort of been arguing the entire trip, because they are young and they had been in a way shoved down each other's throats by EA, because every other day in August they'd see each other lots. Lots of little girl arguing between stupid things like shampoo and slime. We were in my grandpa's basement playing with the Wii, and I was messing with EC, changing the player numbers on the remote. She had been begging to be player one, being all nasty and crying to me. Ten year old. I had changed the player numbers about three times when she went upstairs to EA who sent down IMU to calm EC down. He told us to stop messing around and just let her be player one. So we did and I crap you not. The funniest thing happened. EC's remote said she was player one, but she wasn't controlling anything. Somehow it was M1. EC realizes this and begins the worst tantrum I've ever seen from her. Screaming, crying, semi-snot rockets. So I just made it worse by telling her I'm not playing until she can calm down. She begins crying even louder, and M1 and M2 also stop playing, as it was very disturbing. This sets her off to the point where I'm scared for everyone's life. I swear she was about to go Super Saiyan. So at this point she's crying so loudly going upstairs, EA meets her halfway with IMU. They go upstairs with EC and a few minutes later, EA comes down and tells M1 and M2 that they had been a disappointment the entire trip because of the arguing between EC and M1. Most of the argument started or caused by EC if you couldn't tell already. EC is bossy which I should have said already. Then EA turns to me because I'm the oldest in the room by five years. She is very angry and couldn't suppress her child and help the situation, which shouldn't be my responsibility, because her entitled child was raised expecting everything to be given to her. No matter what, no matter when, no matter why, etc. So I'm kind of irritated, but I'm not upset yet, because I know that's how EA is sometimes. I do get upset, however, when IMU sends everyone but me upstairs. He gives me a lecture on how I'm supposed to be mature now. I don't like it when anyone disciplines me except my dad, because he told me not to take crap from people. Especially in the situation which was not my fault, but was a direct fault of their parenting. I will admit, I did add some gas to the fire, but I still don't blame myself too much. She grows up expecting everything. So he is lecturing me, I can still see EC crying upstairs. It's been at least 5 minutes since she went Super Saiyan crybaby. IMU wraps up and M1 and M2 come down, followed by EA. She is leaving with EC and IMU, and she just left, didn't say bye to anyone. Not even her father-in-law who doesn't ever deserve to be ignored. Not ever. He is the kindest soul on the planet. So, exit EC, EA, and IMU, without a goodbye. Sometimes those family trips, where it's like a vacation and everyone's together, they haven't seen each other in a long time, they start off really pleasantly, but when you're confined in a small place for too long, eventually there's conflict, and the nastiness just comes out. It's kind of sad when you think about sometimes we're more tolerant and kinder to strangers than we are to our own family members. To begin with, a little bit of context. My siblings and I are homeschooled, and we go to a Christian apologetics class every Friday. 
since my mum is friends with most of the parents and my brother is friends with most of the children in that class, we decided to have them over for lunch on Wednesday. All told, about 12 kids showed up with their parents. The kids, including me, despite being a teenager, had the backyard, the den, and the playroom to hang out in while the adults had the kitchen and the living room. The backyard has a swing, a huge tree, toys, and two playhouses. The den has a 42-inch TV that was playing some kids' movie. Not to mention several boxes filled with toys. While the den and the living room are downstairs, the playroom is upstairs. The playroom also has a large plasma TV and some toys. The only difference between the playroom and the den was that the kids had set the playroom up like a movie theater. Snacks, drinks, rows of seats, etc. So that they could watch a movie. However, after a while, the younger kids left, leaving the older kids in the playroom. Now onto the story. After everyone had lunch, I went upstairs to check on the older kids, who I hadn't seen in half an hour. Once I got there, I noticed they were watching PewDiePie while my little brother battled his Beyblades, with two of his friends on the other side of the room. I love PewDiePie, and I usually find a quiet time of day to watch his videos so that I'm not interrupted. So watching this video with a bunch of tired kids was ideal. I sat down and all was fine and dandy, until the EK showed up. He seemed nice and wasn't much of a hassle before, but seeing us watching PewDiePie triggered something in him. He started demanding that we took PewDiePie off the screen because his mum didn't let him watch that. Now there were six kids, including me, watching PewDiePie, and none of us had cared that he had cursed twice in the six minutes of the video that we had watched. But to EK, this seemed like a reason to call the FBI on us. The thing is, EK had just walked in. He didn't know what PewDiePie was saying, and he had never heard him curse. But he just didn't want us watching something that he wasn't allowed to watch. He could have gone to the den or the backyard or the living room, or even to the other side of the room. But he decided that he wanted to be there at that exact moment. Not wanting to be bothered by an annoying brat, all of the older kids just ignored him and continued watching the video. Of course, this did not please EK and he climbed onto the TV stand and put his arms out as if to block the TV. Annoyed, I sternly told EK to get down because it was dangerous and we were trying to watch. I'm pretty tall and I have a permanent mad face, so he immediately did as I said in fear that I would hurt him. I would never do anything like that, but he was still a little intimidated. After about 30 seconds, he grabbed a chair, put it in front of the TV, and stood on it. All of the older kids were starting to get pretty ticked off, so I told him to get down again. He got down, but it was only to climb back on to the TV stand. I had to threaten him with calling the adults at this point, something that I later regretted because that is where he got the brilliant idea of calling EM on us. He went downstairs and about a minute and a half later, he came back with EM. Here's how the conversation went, to the best of my recollection. What's going on here? The rats and pseudo pals. We're just watching a video. He's not allowed to watch that. That is an inappropriate video. Pewds was ranking Minecraft mobs. It's really not. We told DK that he doesn't have to watch it if he doesn't want to. Yeah, we have a TV downstairs. No, he should be allowed to be up here, and he wants to play with his friends. My brother. You need to take this off. Older kids groan and sigh. At this point, I was bewildered that this entitled mum had reasoned that forcing an entire group of kids to stop watching a video so that her son could be where he wanted to be at the time of his choosing. So I turned off the TV and left. I feel bad for leaving the other older kids behind. I thought I could have invited them to my room to finish the video on my computer, but I know EK would just have found his way in there and forced us to take it off. All in all, it was an annoying experience and a win for the EMs and EKs. One last thing, I want to attempt to explain the case of the Christian EMs. No, not all Christian mothers are all that bad, but there are a few that ruin it for everyone else. These entitled mums generally think that because they're Christian, they are immediately above everybody else and nothing that they can do can be wrong. However, the Bible teaches Christians to be humble and to judge their own actions as well as to correct their own children when they do something wrong. So if you meet a Christian mother, remember, they're not all insane sociopaths. There's nothing wrong with wanting to have high standards for your children if, you know, you don't approve of them watching something on YouTube. But you can't just automatically extend that to every single child that your child comes in connection with. The kids who aren't your kids that you're trying to parent just aren't going to respect you. 
They're just going to hold resentment towards you because they know you don't really have any say over what they can and can't do. And they're probably just going along with it out of politeness. The thing she really should have done was just encouraged her child to go play in one of the many other places they could have played. You know what, perhaps if that was the only place the kids were allowed to play, maybe then she should have gone to me like, you know what, look, this is where my kid has to be, I don't want him having to hear that kind of thing, could you please turn it off? And considering they obliged when you were really rude to them, I'm sure they would have done the same, probably even more so, if you asked them really nicely. Wasn't sure where to post this, so I'm posting it here. Anyways, hey Reddit, this is my first story I'm writing since I thought I'd never run into entitled person. Well, a couple of weeks ago, I proved myself wrong. Before we start, let me set the scene. New York, near the Hudson River, next to a bike rental store, alongside a bike lane on the road. Also, I wrote this the day after it happened. Alright, so yesterday, me and my dad decided to go out. We go to eat lunch and plan to bike until dinner time. We go down to a place called Blazing Saddles and rent a bike. After that, we go and just ride down this road specifically for bikes, roller skates, etc. Everything is fine and dandy. Passing dog parks, getting blinded by a helicopter landing with all the debris, and stopping ever so often for a water break. All good, right? Seems like a nice day, yeah? Well, this is the same as car accidents. It's always when you least expect it. So we're riding back to the rental store and I notice it's coming up. What's next is important to note. I tilt my head several times to signal I'm turning left, because I'm an idiot and I don't know how to do hand signals. After the head tilting, I wait until the other bike passes me, then I turn and use the aid of the sidewalk to help dismount. I'm very short and I only could reach the floor on my tiptoes. I get off the bike and I hear behind me, censoring curse words just because, the cast, EB entitled B. He looks to be 30 to 40, and he's also a grown man. BS bystander, BP bike people, the rental staff. Hi! I turn around. You freaking have to signal when you're turning! So then I turn back around and start to move my bike towards the bike rental. Thinking this is just some crazy guy, I'll just ignore them like the other bullies that are at my school. He'll just curse into the air and leave me alone. Welp, I was wrong. As I'm walking, I hear, Hey, don't you freaking walk away when I'm talking to you! Hey, come down, dude, leave her alone! Yeah, she's just a kid, leave her be. Don't listen to that guy. Let's get your bike returned. Welcome back, let me get that for you. Hey, didn't you hear me? I said don't freaking walk away. You're freaking paying for this. I hand my bike over to the bike rental people while EB stomps over, still shouting. While my dad stands between both of us so in case EB decides to get physical. Look at what you freaking did to my bike. Look at it. The freaking spokes of my bike are freaking broken. Look, this bike is a $10,000 bike. It's not some rental bike. I look, and if there was anything, it'd probably be a hairline fracture or something only seen with a magnifying glass. Excuse me, can you please leave us alone? What even is that? Referring to me. Is that a boy or a girl? Like, what even is that? Wow, okay. Pulling the gender card in this day and age, great. Though I've been mistaken for a guy several times. I'm just a girl with a very short haircut. Gee, thanks. I'm not having this conversation. Please leave us alone. So then the BP finishes the transaction and gives back my dad his $100, since he returned the bike in good shape. With the EB still yelling at us, then my dad turns back to leave the place. Hey, where do you think you're going? This is a $200,000 bike. These tires are 500 alone. You're paying for this. We're leaving to go back to our car. No, you aren't. You're staying right here and I'm calling the police. You're staying there. At the moment, he's also getting very close in our faces. Don't come any closer. I'm not touching you. See, I'm not touching you. Hello? Police? Yeah, I had a bike accident. This guy hit me with this bike and now it's freaking broken. No, I don't need a freaking ambulance. I need a police so I can get a police report. This freaking person won't take any responsibility. Points at me. You could at least take freaking responsibility. This is your fault. I don't know whatever you are, girl, boy. Freaking take responsibility. Excuse me, I'm not having this conversation. Wait until the police come. This whole thing goes on for a long time. EB is just ranting, trying to get under my skin. So I distract myself and look at the pigeons and whatnot. At some point, EB kept calling the police and even threatens to attack us if we try and leave. Even when I tried to move out of the way for another biker, he yelled at us then too. Since it's been an hour of this guy holding us there, my dad calls the police. 
Hello, police? Yes, says personal information that I can't share. This man is threatening us and it's getting very hostile. Hostile? This freaking person won't take responsibility! He is threatening us that he will assault us if we move. Yeah, that's right. I won't let these guys move on until your police get here. I'll freaking push them. I don't care. Please stop interrupting. Yes, he's also called the police a couple of times. Hey, don't touch me like that! I didn't even touch you. I'm talking to the police right now. He's being very aggressive and I would like to have police protection from this guy. Thank you. Yes, all right, I'll see you soon. My dad talks to me in Chinese. We're both Chinese. That since the place closes at seven, we'll leave since it's been too long. I agree. After a while, EB calls the police several times and they end up not showing up at all. Thanks police. My dad then says to EB that we're going to leave. He threatens us again and then goes on the phone again, then says that he'll follow us anywhere we go. All right, so there's threatening of assault, threatening of stalking, keep that up. After a long time, the guy goes over to the BP and tries to get our info, but the BP says no, they aren't allowed to do that. So EB says to call their manager. <laughs> yeah, that type of person. And even the manager says no. Finally, the guy calls his lawyer and says that they'll meet at that area and settle. Curses at us again and then pedals away. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhere. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.